nice to come back to this fantastic environment. Nice building, nice environment, nice people. Everything is nice. Uh, even the climate. Uh, from my perspective. Uh, firstly, it seems to be a little bit unfair that we are two and you are just one. But that is a tradition in the academic world, but I don't think it's unfair because you are the expert and we are just asking more or less deep questions. <laughs> so I think uh, you benefit from that. Part. So I, I think we should uh, be able to have some decent conversation here. We have decided, Annelies and myself, that we will do it in this way that I will first discuss with you some general things and then we look into the thesis and uh, Annalisa comes in when she, she, uh, ha when she has questions and she has also been concentrating on the ice mechanic stuff. So that is more or less a talk. So we will do it in this way. That's another thing which uh, I think we should point out uh, immediately and uh, that is uh, there might be some confusion here because uh, I myself have, have been out of office for at least two weeks and I think the final book was sent to me and it's in my uh, mailbox back at the university. So what I have read and what I have been looking at, it, it's some earlier version. And when I compare this, there are some slight differences, not big ones, but some slight. And that might be some chapter, if I'm referring to figure this and this, might be something else in the book. So we have to work with this uh, uh, together. Uh, having said this, I'm always a little bit uh, interested in uh, asking uh, the student why he or she, in this case you, why did you do this work? Uh, yeah, we heard from the introduction that you came to uh, Svalbard uh, long ago, more you worked at the uh, COA with something, uh, well, it sounds logical for a French young, highly skilled person to work in a restaurant. Um, and then you went into consulting business and then for some reason you came into Linus and did. So was this some, you, did you have the feeling that, well, research is something I should uh, do? Or how was the process? I'm allowed to speak um, completely uh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you should uh, pay attention to this. <laughs> First, uh, the story that you heard is probably not completely right because I came in 2000 to UNIS as a master student to do my master thesis or uh, what is called a Diplom Ukave in Norwegian. Uh, and I got a job at base camp uh, in the evenings, but it was not the reason I came up here. So it was my last year of, uh, of my last year of, uh, as a master student or my last half year. Uh, and after after that stay, uh, well, being here as a student for just half a year, you you want more. And uh, and I had to take uh, to do my um, as a French citizen, I had to do some form of military or equivalent service. And after that, in uh, after that, I was finished with that in two thousand one. I started looking for work and actually applied for a position here as a, I would take any, anything actually. And uh, I was applying for a, for a, a position as an um, IT guy. And I didn't get that position. Uh, and I, uh, but then as a second uh, best option I wanted to move to Norway and I went to Stavanger and started working there as a researcher in risk uh, uh, risk uh, management which was uh, which has is actually applied mathematics which was what I was uh, what most of my uh, education was in 
although my master here at Unis was uh, with uh, Arne Stanis on, uh, on permafrost temperature in, or uh, the effect, actually the effect of climate change on the, on the, on the depth of the Arctic layer. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I all, but as I as I moved to uh, Stavanger, I kept an eye on on Svalbard because I still wanted to come back. And then when the position there was a position uh, uh, in technology as a PhD candidate, I, I applied and uh, actually didn't expect to get it. Uh, was I think number three on the list uh, and uh, a little bit of luck, and I actually got it. Maybe it wasn't like, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, and the motivation for after after I started working, there came a, a new motivation, which was I I saw or I wanted to be also outside. I didn't want to be only in an office. I wanted to be outside and do practical things. And I and I saw research as a way of doing that and still doing uh, doing uh, intellectual. Work. Uh, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the reason why I'm asking this is that when I, when I read this uh, and being a university professor for some time, you have read a number of uh, work like this. Uh, when I read this, it's a little bit different from what I'm used to read. Uh, and you had touched the subject during your presentation. Uh, uh, so, so I wanted to know whether you had a very strong feeling about research and what you would like to do because this this is a little bit different from other engineering uh, theses. But that is not the case. Or I don't think I don't know. I don't think so. I have I have a strong I have a, from from working as a researcher uh, and I'm, I don't count or maybe also a, as a researcher risk management from working as a as a researcher in so many years, or so few compared to you, but uh, uh, in, in several years, I have uh, developed a strong meaning or a strong uh, opinion on what research should be. And, uh, but that came that came along. It wasn't uh, it wasn't there from the beginning. So the subject itself, coast to sea ice uh, action on the breakwater in Arctic Inlet in Swala. Was that the topic given from the beginning? Absolutely not. No. I, I think probably after three years in the PhD, I still didn't know what I was doing. Okay. Quite honestly, I I, I was observing. I I was uh, doing a lot of observations. I was doing things here and there, and these things with the bags, and but I still couldn't find uh, find um, what to say. Um, the red, uh, red friend. Yeah. 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 Okay. But but uh, so the first intention was to do this with the bags and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, so the first intention was was uh, uh, that most of the work would be on the bags. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then uh, it has developed to to be this. And, 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 and if I yeah. uh, it, and and some of the motivation for doing that was that I was here pretty much working alone on that topic. Uh, while I could see that uh, in, in the next office uh, and or the other offices, there was a, a group of people that were working together on these CIs with uh, Knut Aylarn and Sebastian Mo, and and, uh, and there was Peter Olav Muset before him. Uh, so there is, uh, and in Antenu there is also this this um, this community. So so uh, so I felt it, it it didn't it didn't give any meaning to sit alone and and have these. Uh, these guys, I wanted to to do more work together, and I think that was a, a big. Yeah. I, I understand because uh, what, what I find so impressive with this work is the amount of observations and uh, the amount of measurements you have done, and you have put it together in a very good and structured way, and e easy to follow. Uh, but uh, it's not in what we normally do in engineering, that uh, it's a clear engineering aspect. Uh, this is, uh, uh, that is part of engineering, but a little bit more of science. Yeah. yeah, I completely agree. And I think one of the reasons for that is that uh, it's, I feel that it's a completely new field, actually. I, I didn't feel, I didn't, I didn't find any people actually having, been, having, having worked 
on specifically that. There are people who are working in North America on uh, river rice, uh, that kind of things, but but uh, not not exactly on characterizing coastal ice. Uh, so so I think uh, for that reason, when you come in a new in a new area, you have you are in uncharted waters. You need to you need to make uh, to do the first work, and then you can do the engineering possibly. And so it was too it's too too early. And, I fully, fully understand that plan. You should be uh, acknowledged for the tremendous amount of work in all of your freezing uh, hours in the, the cabin. Uh, well, the cabin was water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Uh, th then, uh, after this, I, I, I want to discuss a little bit. Uh, when you're doing research, you can do it in many ways. Uh, and very often, traditional research, it's said that uh, when starting doing the research, you have some type of idea or hypothesis or something like that, and you put this up, or you have more or less structured, or you have it in your head, and that having this, you are then uh, saying that now I want to validate or say it's not working. So you are measure things, analyze it, and draw conclusions and then go back to the hypothesis and see whether it was right or wrong. How, how, how do you look upon this? No, I Is was this something complete... you have been doing? Or? No, I was in a... Well, in, in some of the, of the um, studies, of the um, sub-studies I did, there was something, and I like with the stresses, okay, there must be, the stresses must vary with the tide. Mm -hmm. Let's measure it. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Uh, with the ice properties, I could see that the ice was was growing in different ways uh, uh, according to where where you were on the coastal ice. So so let's measure it, and then we, we could find. But but more globally, the question was, what is going to happen if we build the road? Let's or a causeway. Let's 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 find out. And then you don't have a hypothesis. You just have to to observe and, and understand what is happening. And maybe when you do the understanding, then uh, at each step you will possibly make a hypothesis. But before you do the, uh, before you make a hypothesis, you must have an understanding of what is happening, or some, some feeling of what is happening. You don't simply read. Well, normally you have some, some idea, uh, you, because you have types of this, uh, the, the areas where the ice is piling up, uh, in the Arctic or Svalbard. And so, for me, it sounds like you had the idea that even at your place there should be ice piling up. You mean from the picture I had of the old key, yeah, for okay, example? Because you were touching this and said that, that so it sounded like you had an idea that this might happen, that ice is piling up. Yeah. Yeah, so then you had a hypothesis. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So there's a little bit of how our research is done. And I yeah. think you have been doing good research, but you haven't uh, really presented in, in this, uh, maybe right. a little bit old fashioned way, but anyway. Um, I have a comment. Yeah. Um, I, I think you had this engineering challenge. If you were going to build a rainwater, what kind of things happen to this? And this is an engineering question and because just like you said there is very little research done on these processes so you needed to do this science first as a basis and this could be just pointed out a little more clearly but I think you did it and I think it was a great job. Okay, so, so, so that, that a little bit more uh, Starting in the beginning, where you line up the uh, things, uh, what your your objectives and things like that, uh, you 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 are very clear about uh, what the objectives uh, are with your study. But you write something here under objectives, saying that the uh, uh, the objective of the thesis is to document and analyze coastal ice conditions. Uh, and try to generalize the results to the Arctic case. <coughs> so then I ask you, do you think that you have been doing this? No. 
But I don't see any comments in the end that you haven't been fulfilling uh, the objectives. I, I completely agree with your point. I, I don't think I have uh, been able. Uh, well, okay. To some extent, I think. I did. Yeah, because I I did analyze um, in. Um, In the discussions on um, if it's okay that I just look it up. Here on on the, in subchapter six seven ice foot and coastal ice. If I'm not mistaken, I just have yeah. to check. But uh, here, yeah, exactly. Here I see, I look at uh, from the observations that, that I did in uh, at Barinese, I, for example, that I had um, the picture I showed from the ice foot at the freeze up on the east side of the breakwater with capes piling up. I tried to track back what are the what were the reasons why that happened on that side, on the why on the other side it didn't happen, and then by understanding what factors lead to what features, I, I uh, at least went in that direction of generalizing uh, based on based on here, so wind and waves, sea ice regime, temperature, cosmology, tide, what, what effects that has on, on the different uh, processes that I studied. But I agree that, um, that uh, probably not in the conclusion or anything I, did I did I make clear that that I did a generalization? I, I think it would have been valuable just that you say this. Mm. But still, uh, when you're commenting upon the ice foot, I think that is a very strong part of your uh, thesis mm. uh, to, to, to make uh, clear all, all this uh, and systemize uh, things about the ice foot. So that is uh, to, just to... May, may I make a comment yeah. on that? Sure. Because that was actually something that I, that came up while I was writing. I, I started to write, and I, and I and suddenly I found, out, okay, what are we talking about now? What, what is we're talking about ice foot? But what is it actually? And and we're talking about the shore. What is the shore? And then I started to look uh, into the definitions, and I found that that the definitions were uh, sometimes unexisting. Uh, it was up to each researcher, and 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 even uh, international bodies would would have different definitions even on the ice types so 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 that was uh, uh, in a way I was I was in a way lucky because that that uh, that gave me some material to write about so and this, uh, but, but I would just comment a small thing here. Uh, and that is uh, something with, with the other 15 students sitting in the audience that is something we we experience all the time when you when you have an enormous amount of data and you don't know how to handle it and you, you really don't know what you are aiming for when you start to write about it you start writing and then it, it, the brain clears and you get something out of it mm -hmm. which you couldn't have been thinking from the beginning yeah. but, but I appreciate, appreciated the nomenclature that uh, you have included in the thesis because um, the different uh, words and expressions which uh, is defined is of great help when you read it and, um, uh, and help to understand your descriptions and observations in your findings. Uh, however, I would also appreciate that some similar um, list for the physical and mechanical properties that you investigated because um, for example, the water content have a different definition for people dealing with soil mechanics and those dealing with rock mechanics. They are based on either weight or, or volume. And um, uh, for example, on page 43, uh, uh, you say that uh, air and brine fractions and porosity were calculated as functions of salinity, density and temperature from the equations developed by Fox and Weeks. But 
but if you had the expression or the definitions that the different properties are based on, it would also be helpful. Mm. Find the exact place where you're. Yeah, cook sandwich, yeah. Oh, second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was just an example, but uh, it will be helpful for other scientists reading your book. How was your properties defined? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I, I see your comments. Uh, but but uh, having said that, you should also be ignored for this very uh, detailed and. Uh, Good summary as we, we have been talking about the different, uh, different, different terms. I, 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 I want just to clarify a small thing under the scope. It, it's a little bit funny uh, sentence. And that is the last one. The data are also mostly related to the upper 50 centimeters of the ice, which can reach three meters in thickness. So, what you say is 50 centimeters can reach three meters. The ice comma which can reach the ice can reach 300 centimeter. Is, okay. it, is it wrong? Uh, I don't know. I, I read it uh, that uh, this. You, I thought you meant that this 50 centimeters. The properties of this yeah, was uh, yeah. to be uh, the same for three meters. You see, that was a misunderstanding. I, uh, you are the expert. I'm. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, it, it was clear after. Uh, and I have written a lot of comments here. Good, 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 uh, good summary, so we don't uh, talk about that. Uh, and then you come to the study. The, the, um, uh, may, maybe there's uh, something here. Uh, you are talking about um, uh, the ice foot and uh, hinge, hinge zone, which I think is uh, it's a good expression. That's some type of hinge. Uh, it's a good expression, and that is, uh, as I see it in chapter 2.2.5, uh, you talk about hinge uh, uh, And you you're, uh, clearly state here uh, that uh, you, you are going to use the term hinge cell over the more uh, commonly used uh, uh, term active cell. And I, I think it's very good. But then, a few sentences down, you're back to active sim. You, don't you believe in what you're saying? <laughs> um, wh where am I? Uh, it's, uh, I thought I, thought I, had ch I checked it up, uh, but okay. Okay, so it's, uh, you, you still believe that th this active sim should not be called active sim, it should be called that's great. Okay, great. I, I started to be nervous. Uh, no, let's see. Was that just cheating me? <laughs> uh, and then in uh, the chapter about studied area, there was something which I didn't know about. Uh, and I was eager to find out, but I couldn't. Uh, but you said that you should help me. And that is under the uh, chapter 3.2.1, Svalbard, Svejan, Ispallan and Svalbard. Uh, there are two nice pictures uh, which are given the, uh, the, the number 3.3 and 3.4. And in the text around this, you, you say that uh, some good information, uh, but in the uh, one sentence, uh, a mining camp in Sverdala and a Polish, Polish research station in the southern part of Spitsburg. And that should be seen in, uh, in figure 3.4, according to what you have written here earlier. And, and it's probably right. I, I'm just curious to know where it is. Well, it's in Hornsjön. It's uh, the next, uh, or it's the last. If you see what is here. Okay. Okay. Uh, van Mayen, Van Keulen, and then... Uh, okay, okay. Because uh, I didn't know. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, wow, we should not go 
too much in details. Uh, however, there is must be some type of um, uh, yeah, it's probably a misprint, but uh, I've given you the chance to correct this, and that is in equation three point three and three point four. <laughs> probably some. So at 3.3 3 .3, I'm, um, I'm saying that uh, Sveosun is uh, 690 meter wide and 1.8 meter deep in average. So the I, cross... I agree. Yeah. Next one. Okay. And the, so the mean flow velocity is uh, Q divided by the area. Seems reasonable. Sorry? Yeah, that, that is okay. And then? Oh yeah, okay. Um, Minus uh, meter per second. Yes. Sorry. I understood that it was a misprint. Yeah. I wanted to play. So. <laughs> sharing that I read it. <laughs> uh, then you are talking about permafrost, and uh, that's uh, fine. Um, you are also talking then. Uh, about uh, the, the uh, structure, you have a, a soft layer, uh, which you say is uh, consists of uh, something like 80 to 90 percent of silt uh, and uh, a small portion of clay and sand, and that is over is about a more a hard layer. Uh, and you, you present a graph about this, uh, which is given the uh, number 3.12. 3. Uh, and it seems logical and it seems fine. Uh, but then later on, uh, when you're presenting your, um, uh, well, Annalisa was uh, talking uh, a few minutes ago, uh, you're presenting results from uh, some vein tests. Uh, do you have any comments about the, the result uh, from the vein test? And you present this in chapter 4.2 and there's a figure which is given uh, the number 4.9. There you present the vein test result and uh, from my understanding is then some type of ungrained shear strength goes to step. Do you have some comments about uh, is this big values or small values? Or? Um, is this it's a long time since I um, had a course in uh, soil modeling. But that is the most important stuff at the uh, universities. Um, well, from my perspective, this is uh, very low values. Yes, uh, uh, from, from um, uh, having been on the site and seen what happened, I know it's, uh, it's a uh, low value. Term. Uh, and what we see here is then, uh, when, when you go in the, this graph, you, down is deeper down in the deposit. So the high value deepest down is probably <coughs> related to the hard layer below. Yeah, that's correct. Problem. You have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We stopped, uh, we had to stop. Uh, yeah, you uh, couldn't penetrate. No, that's correct. So then you have. Uh, figure here where the ungrained shear strength is reducing the depth. Is that something it's you think is uh, right. strange? In, in, the top, in the top it's reducing the depth. You know? And if we think of the layer, then the stresses within the layer, effective stress, will probably increase the depth. The stress within the deposit will be higher. So if you so you will are you thinking about where where you would have a failure or 
from my perspective, if it's more or less the same material, it would be logical to see that there was an increase with them. But there are... Uh, that, that might be reasons for this. Uh, then I think that it's uh, nice to have some comments. That's right. Yeah. It, it's, a little bit, uh, yeah. it's a little bit strange. I, I agree that uh, it should have been discussed more than... I just, I just put it out that I didn't discuss it. No. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was... Uh, Yuma Finset did uh, some... some uh, co took some cores and found that there were a lot of different layers okay. all the way down. So, so, then that, so that, could explain, yeah, that could explain that, you know. And that is also a danger with the uh, work that if you're putting information and you're not commenting on it, then think that, well, I put it in, yes. Mm -hmm. But then you're not using it. Then, then you might be tracked uh, that uh, as something strange and people will uh, argue that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you have also been using uh, vein testing here. Do you have any, do you have any idea about the uh, type of testing with vein testing in the, this type of very much silt material, silt material. You, you have said that it's a 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent silt, so it's a lot of silt, mm. just a small fraction of the clay. Mm. Uh, you, you, are, you are asking if it's if it's a good method to use? Uh, yes, if you have some idea. Sometimes you, you, we can use methods just because we don't have any uh, other methods to use. Yeah. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, we, we were uh, cleaning up in the, in the basement, in the Punis basement, and we found this, uh, this uh, vein test equipment. And I think that was one of the reasons we just wanted to try it out, and, and that was a good way of trying it out. I, I don't think it was much more reflected than, than that. Uh, and I don't, have, I don't know enough about... Um, Investigation uh, techniques, uh, soil investigation techniques that I know what we should have used instead. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, from my perspective, it's. it's uh, no. I don't think you should trust it too much. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, what we, at least what we got out of it was that it's a very weak bottom. Yes. Uh, but I, I agree that, or I, I understand that it's uh, maybe not much more than that. From my perspective, not knowing too much about this, it would be more valuable to have done some type of uh, CPT testing or some type of mm. But then you should have uh, this type of equipment available. Maybe uh, retrospect, retrospectively, I um, I feel that we didn't um, investigate the soil properties enough. Uh, we had a failure on the break brother, and um, and I, I I didn't have a good feeling. Um, I, I I think we went too fast. On that. that that very good you comment on this yourself because that was also something I would give into, mm. but. When you have said that, it's also important for all uh, PhD work that you have to put an end to it. You mm -hmm. cannot go on forever. Mm -hmm. uh, there must be an end. And then uh, all these things which you say, you can say, well, I should have been doing that as well. But, there, but here there is a HSE issue, as uh, we would say. So, so here you're risking people's lives. Yes. Uh, it's, it's it's not, uh, you, you cannot do that actually. Yeah. And that might also be a small thing which I would have liked to see that some comments about uh, I have covered this and all this as I, I haven't been dealing with mm -hmm. because then it's clear for the reader where the borderline is uh, from what you think you have covered and what you have not covered. And maybe then this should be outside. Uh, this would have been important, and I should have done this. But the time to structure the money and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's nothing wrong with that because we 
always have to put the end to it. And he said, I keep on talking. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, then I come into the uh, temperature measurements. There's a lot of temperature measurements here. And you must have yeah. files and files and files with numbers. Mm. What have you done? Why did you do all this? And what have you done with all this uh, data? Well, why did I collect so much data? Yeah. Well, it's. Um, I'm continuing in my honest way. <laughs> It's uh, one of the consequences of uh, having uh, money thrown at you. You can, uh, you want to buy ten thermistor cables, you just buy them, and you you don't optimize uh, how much how much you put. And it's also uh, so actually the the guy who was selling them to me, he was the person restricting, telling me, "Are you sure you need so many?" And. Uh, <laughs> And the other thing is a little bit what I said earlier, and that I realized it's not putting putting instruments all over the place is not what is going to give you good science. You need to you need to understand you need to understand where you place them. So uh, possibly possibly I had uh, too many thermistor cables, but it's nothing compared to what the original plan was. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, what I did, what I did with it, you mean technically or uh, analyze it and uh, research. research? Yeah, when I have loads of, of graphs and I only on, and and it helped me to to understand uh, plotting. I I I used quite some time um, uh, writing um, programming pr procedures. So that I could plot very easily for any day, and I saw I could I could plot any kind of result result out of that, and and this way, whenever I I was wondering about something about the temperatures, I could just uh, press a key and I would have the graph uh, out, and and uh, and I only I only put in the thesis uh, the um, the ones that were the most relevant, but but they all but they, it helped me to understand. Uh, see what, what was relevant. So, so the next question will be that all this huge amount of information, will that they disappear when they are now leaving uh, in this? Or? That, is, that is an excellent question and, uh, and I, have, I, am, uh, I am actually shocked that, uh, well, that, that I have been, I have had to ask because that is, the, the, these, these data, it's only text files, it's maybe 10 mega or it's almost nothing. But I have pictures, I have 40 giga of pictures and I have videos. And I have to have three hard disks at home just in order to keep back of it. And am, I, am I going to do that all my life? I mean, how, how, uh, how is it that universities are not... I, I, I have to, 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 uh, to ask the university can you keep my data? How, how is it that it's this way, not the other way around? So I, I think this is a, a really good issue, and there is also the issue of the available or the openness of these data. I have put all the data that I have that I have used for um, for the plots that are in the thesis. They are available on my website, so you can download it and you can download the code that that uh, plots the the the, the plots. But uh, but not the pictures. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to comment uh, about this, uh, it seems that you were, were close to falling in the trap with measuring. Yes, it's good to have measurements, and when you come then to the analytical part way of trying to put it together, there will be so much of information, so the brain, human brain, cannot uh, analyze it well. We we cannot handle it. Uh, Intellectually, so so uh, maybe it's sometimes better in a, in a, in an older phase to measure less and understand exactly. the the output. Yeah. And, and because yeah, because I had another problem was it was that I was uh, on site two three days a week, mm -hmm. and I was measuring a lot of things, and then I had to process it, right. and I would I wasn't able to process it in time for the next week. So I so I didn't know what these measurements actually gave me. So the next week, 
if I had known what they had, they had given me, I could have designed my measurements accordingly. But it was only at the end of the season that I had actually the time to write all the code and, and, to, and to plot. And then I, then I saw, okay, I should have done this, this, this. But it was too late, of course. Yeah. Um, but um, you actually did a lot of programming and it helped you to understand and maybe you could cook some of these thoughts, uh, how uh, you understood the processes in the book. Mm -hmm. One thing that I was curious about was how did you do the ice coring? Uh, what kind of? Uh, you, you, you said that you took horizontal yeah. ice cores. You, you take. I have a picture of that. Uh, or you, you take. Uh, we have these um, cores that are. I think they are 50 centimeters in di diameter. So, so when you take uh, a vertical core, it is um, 70 millimeter. Uh, but you can take, maybe it was uh, uh, 30 centimeter, I don't remember exactly, 30 or 50. And you core down and so you get this quite big cylinder and then afterwards you put the cylinder down and you take the, se the se uh, 70 millimeter core and you core in the cylinder. So then you get your horizontal course. Of course it's, uh, it's much more uh, demanding work than coring vertically, but if you are going to measure uh, the, the strength, it, we wanted to, to see the, um, the stresses um, in the horizontal plane, so it only made sense to... There are already so many uncertainties when you work in ice mechanics, if, if, you, if you take the, in, the, in the wrong direction, in addition, you, you don't know what you're doing. But then, um, you seldom see the horizontal course. And if you already took it vertically, you should, of course, have done a vertical in addition. So you, you could have track of the directions which you said you, you're sorry, you didn't have track of what was the vertical direction in your horizontal form. I, I, I didn't follow you on that. Um, I wondered how you took all these horizontal course. Yeah. And you said you started with a large vertical one. Yeah. It would be nice to have a vertical one in the same position as a horizontal one. Mm -hmm. Then you would be sure to have the, the stresses or the strength in the vertical direction. Because of, you said you also did some um, experiments on the horizontal, but not knowing what was the vertical direction in I went around. What I meant was that um, uh, yeah, I, I, I wish one you were talking about. It was about the ori orientation of the crystals or something. Yes. And that is, that, that is more that, um, so we have this, on the, on the site, on the free-floating ice, uh, we, measured, uh, or we measured the stresses, so we had the principal stress directions there. Uh, no. Yeah, you said it would... Uh, direction after we had cored, so we didn't know exactly the, the horizontal course in which direction they were. But if, if I remember correctly, we did it on the others. So, so, we, uh, so you should, when you take the course, you should note, note the direction. Yeah, that's in the horizontal plane. And also in both planes. And then planes. you have a circle, and what is the vertical direction through this horizontal course? But if you know the, both directions, you know, <coughs> first direction on the big core, <coughs> and then and then the direction on the on the small core, you, you have all the directions. So on, the, on the slides, 
the thin slides where you looked at the ice crystals. Mm. Do you know which direction is a vertical one? Yes, I think so. It, it said you didn't. And I yeah. think that was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I don't have it completely in uh, mind. It's in the results, I guess, in ice properties, or in the discussion, maybe. I think it was in the discussion. In the discussion on ice properties, page 101. Another question: Why did you not take uh, samples through the whole thickness of the ice cover? That was a technical. Uh, uh, when you t when you take those, um, I think it was. I think it's a technical issue. I, on the on the ice scoring, I'm not the expert. I was uh, assisting the the others, and they are experienced in that. But I think when you take. When you take with a small course, you just uh, put the rod and, and you go further down. But when you take with a big core... Uh, I, I think there is something... There isn't, isn't an error. Uh, ice well, mechanics. First you can yeah, take it, it twice, so then it can get... It's possible to take one seven, 70 centimeter and take it out, then drill pull the and use some screw and lift it up again, but... Uh, it's a much bigger, much more difficult job. Yeah, yeah. you can get stuck with it. Mm. Mm. Good. I want your comment. Uh, I apologize if you think it's a nasty one, but still I want your comment on it. Uh, um, uh, what you wrote uh, in chapter four, four two, no four four two eleven in in the book uh, under laboratory work, and uh, we, we have touched it. Uh, under is attached. <coughs> you you said that uh, you evaluated the Young's modules uh, well the. Uh, to be the steepest slope of the stress when plot. Uh, yes, I think I understand how you mean, but uh, that should then be put in some time of a time perspective, because if you are measuring very, very mm. precisely, mm. then you will have a number of points that they can you live it up and down all the time. Mm. And if you are just saying that the steepest slope Right. It can be extremely high value speed, which is not relevant for, for, for the behavior. So maybe you should say that the steepest level under some, mm. some, some percentage interval or something like that. I, I, I assume, um, I, I didn't uh, do the, this, uh, this um, analysis, but I assume that um, the, the points where the, the function was uh, monotonous. So all the points were. So if, then if you have a graph which is typical, uh, why a sigma natural point draw something like this? Yeah. Then you can exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then, but, but that, that is uh, just saying that. <coughs> I understand. Uh, yeah. might, might be a nasty one, but still. Uh, uh, I also want your a comment on. Uh, uh, what, uh, on ice stresses in the hinge zone, uh, you're, you're saying uh, uh, 
that the uh, compressive stresses are not measured uh, with a certain resolution. Do you think this is a problem or it's not a problem? Compressive stresses are measured with plus minus 0.1. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Sorry, uh, and tensor stresses are not measured. Tensor right. stresses are not measured, and that is what I mean. It's a good comment because you are yes. honest in telling what you have measured or not measured. But mm. it, it, is it a problem for you? Yes, because we lost. Uh, if we have the, <coughs> the results. It is a problem because you can't. You are not able to um, to plot the principal stresses if you if, right. if you get in tension, you lose. You, you lose. Yes. You don't have data. So in that aspect, it is. Mm. But if then this uh, material is cracking up, maybe that's not too much of tensor stresses. If it's cracking up, there yeah. are not. Yeah. There are no tensor stresses. Tensor stresses. Yeah. Otherwise, it would. I don't think. But if you are well, but then the pieces are not do Yeah. You s still think it's a problem for you? Well, <coughs> I'm looking at the at the plots. If we look at um, page 107, and the sensor at 45 degrees on the land side. We lose it uh, when the stress goes below 20 or something kilopascal. And that is due to the fact that the sensor doesn't measure tensile stress or below a certain uh, value of comp compression it doesn't measure anymore. Yeah. So if, if that would have been able to measure for you, you would have been able to do better analysis. Or... Yes, but it's at the same time, it, it's it's not a, a big issue, no. I think. Yeah. I think so. Not in this case. It, I, I mean, we could imagine another situation where... Okay. Hey, wait. I have some more questions about this figure. You, you know. Page 107? Yes. Even this so on the whole page. Um, because you can see that the stresses, they have some, uh, some nice regularity. And you can see the, the tide on the bottom. And do you have any explanation? Because I'm curious. Or did you have any thought of what made the different uh, yeah. uh, shapes of these stress curves? Well, the first thing I, I observed was, like you said, there is clearly the pattern is related to the tide. And further than that, it's uh, mostly speculations because we only we only measure in one point, and what we measure at 20 centimeter below the bottom, it could be different at 50 for all I know, we, because we only have at least if we had two two measurements, we maybe we could speculate a little bit more. But uh, therefore. Um, it's possible to, to, well, what you would think is that when, uh, let's say, the, the ice uh, is on land here, and uh, this is the sea ice, and the water level is going up, so it's going like that, so you will have the compression, more, more stress, more compressive stresses in the crack here. So that is something that we observe to some extent, but what was uh, um, surprising in this study was that where we saw the, big dif the biggest differences was in the direction uh, parallel to the shore, not perpendicular. So parallel to the, to the cracks, there we had the highest variations in stresses. And what that is due to, or first of all, is, is that correct or is that just in this point? So that is, and and I don't have a good out, or um, I felt that um, maybe we should just stop the discussion there. But um, 
but if we speculate, we could think that the, the, the ice, due to the seabed topography, let's say, if we say that this is correct, that the, it's actually like that, the stresses, the variations in stresses are higher in the direction parallel than in the direction perpendicular to the shore, it could be that the ice is uh, lying on the seabed in one point and not on, not on the other, so it's bended, and then you would have compressive stresses in the top and tensile stresses uh, in, in, uh, at the bottom. That is one, one explanation. But you measured stresses on both sides of the crack, crack. Mm. and having these kind of observations, I think they would be helpful in understanding the process, and that is one of the main things that uh, uh, your thesis is about. So I think maybe this should have some more discussion and try to understand some of these things. Uh, when, like you said, in ice covers, how the hinge is working when they have tension, uh, compression, whether maybe the the it's not a straight line, the crack, so there is friction and they meet and, and, and crush and then no stress. And you can see some very um, regular, uh, repeated mm. um, uh, patterns. And that's why it certainly means something. Yeah. I, I, I agree that I'm th thinking back on what I said, that <laughs> we could discuss this, it um, independently of, of whether the data is correct or not. We, we could speculate anyway, because we can observe, we observe what is happening. So we can say, we can, uh, we can make a hypothesis on, on uh, what effect it would have on the stresses. And then we have one, one measurement. I, I agree that it could have been discussed more. Uh, I, I want to have your comment uh, uh, on a thing which you have written in chapter 5.1. And that is the problem with uh, temperature on ice cover. You say that uh, uh, when spring thaw starts, uh, that would be uh, melting of snow, uh, which will have a temperature of zero degrees centigrade, and that will warm up the seawater. Uh, it would have been uh, quite easy to do some type of thermal analysis just to see if this is a possible scenario, or it is the uh, river. Do you, do you think that there will be enough heat in this meltwater to warm up up the ocean? No, uh, I think you're I think you're right. I, I don't I don't believe I would, in it. I think it's no. the river itself. Mm. I, I was yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I was wondering if that came from me or if it's something I read somewhere. But uh, but I, I agree with you that uh, it's uh, most probably the the. the um, the, the, the main effect, the main thermal effect would come from the water from the, the river. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. then, definitely. I, I would uh, also have, like to have your comment upon the breakup uh, in chapter 5.4. Uh, there you say that uh, uh, there's two seasons, uh, 04, 05, and 6, 7 uh, were comparable in, uh, in relation to the um, uh, freezing uh, index. Uh, but still there is a, a difference in behavior. So, so and, and, and also the thawing index. Uh, so what you Try to say, or you're at least uh, telling it very vague that uh, it's not the uh, uh, thawing degree days or freezing degree days which are of importance there. It's something else, right? I agree. That's uh, something I could have uh, 
developed on. Mm. Because uh, when you say that, the mm. reader starts to think, okay, that's interesting. What should this do? Mm. other things be? Mm. Position of the moon, as you talked about earlier. <laughs> But uh, this thing with the position of the moon, it sounds uh, like crazy, but, but it is not. Because the position of the moon has a, an, a, an effect on the, the, the tidal range. And, and of course, the more you have, the, uh, the more the bigger the tide, the bigger the cracks will be. So it could loosen. And so, but, but, um... Okay, so that makes sense. But yes, the... Uh... Gifts and all that. Uh, I think we move on here. Uh, maybe it's analysis, but I, I want to move on a little bit. We have been touching it. Uh, physical and mechanical properties and how you have determined this. And that is uh, described uh, partly. But the porosity, <laughs> how have Proceed for determine the porosity. How have you been doing? Um, you found my weak spot. That is the I've been uh, this professor's uh, speciality. <laughs> well, how I did it, I asked uh, Magnus if he could do it. <laughs> and then you believed it. And then I believed it. <laughs> Not a, ba a bad way to survive. <laughs> um, and in the book, in the printed book, there's a diagram which was a little bit. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong in it, but I don't understand why you have it. There. It's on page 75. It's a nice diagram where you put up the weight of the ice cores. And then you are talking about densities. But the weight of the I scores without, well, without, yeah, well, if you then have the density, yeah, 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 yeah of course, yeah, I see, you. Yeah. It's, definitely, uh, definitely, if, if the density wouldn't have should. been there, I would have asked, why don't you calculate the density after sure. this, but now you have the density, and then it's, I completely agree. The description of it, but and, and coming back to this question of porosity, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you measure the. Um, let me skip. <laughs> I think you have to uh, go through the density of each each individual grain mm. in order to get the porosity. Yeah. Mm. But we skip that. It's probably right. That's an expert who has done that. I want to go on to something which was very much of interest to me. Thermal regime and frost heat. Uh, and uh, yeah. Professor Semeset said that uh, that was something which I like very much. Uh, and it is. So therefore I want to pay some attention to this. And what you write here uh, is linked to figure 5.40 in my version, but in your thesis in the book it's 5.38. Mm. Uh, and that's a nice graph. Uh, and as I, if I understand correctly, you are at some point close to your nice uh, home at the uh, uh, Whitewater. Uh, you have measured the uh, movement, the vertical movement. Mm. Uh, and there is then uh, from uh, July 07 till uh, October, November uh, 07, there is a heave, right? From July 07 to October yeah. 07, there is a settlement. Set uh, set is it settlement? Settling. Settling. Isn't it? It's lower in October than in July, no? Okay, so then I have mixed up the uh, scale there. So you have settlement up and heave down. So you have then a heave from, uh, from April to October. 
No, no, you have settlement when it goes down and you have heave when it goes up. Yes. Yeah. So then from October 07 to uh, uh, January yeah. 08, you have a heave. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, so that heave, that is in the range of uh, 30 centimeters. Hmm. Even 40. Yeah. Even 40, yes. It's is that much or yeah small? it's it, it was uh, staggering I, I I couldn't believe the, the figures I found and I triple and quadruple checked all my data and I, I couldn't find any error so I put it there and what um, when I saw that it went down 50 centimeter because after, after I observed that, I was extra careful when I did these measurements. And I got, again, 50 centimeter settlement. So that made me think that maybe it was right in the, in the first place. But I agree, it's, uh, it's an incredible uh, change. You're, you're surprised about these uh, numbers. Is that, uh, have you, have you, in the text, have you, uh, Put this in the world, possibly not surprise yeah. because of what you are saying now gives me a sign that you were really surprised yeah. and you almost didn't believe what you are finding. So then that should be something so, mm. so, so strange. So, well, shouldn't I find it somewhere in the text? You are, uh, yes, I agree. No, I yeah. think so too. Because I, 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 I agree with you that this is a very high value. Mm -hmm. And if, if we put this in the context of how much can reasonably be frozen, it's an extremely high value mm -hmm. for us. And then, as you point out in the analysis chapter, you have a trend here uh, over the seasons when there is an ongoing settlement. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? That is realistic. Okay, why? Well, because the the okay the the the, the weight of the breakwater will will uh, compress the the seabed it's lying on, so so the whole structure will settle. Of course, uh, if the ice content in the breakwater increases, it might lift it. So, if that was your yes, point, yes, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I. Uh, I, I agree with you, but uh, I also think that a, a, a due to freezing and thawing, you you will have a consolidation effect in the uh, masses itself. Yeah. Mm. So, 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 so we, we, we have the same opinion. Uh, then uh, the, there are a number of colorful pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry. But just a comment to that. Mm -hmm. Will they ground under the breakwater thaw? <coughs> Uh, probably, uh, uh, so I would expect it on the con. Things sediments, I mean. Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, will you have the consolidating sediments under the breakwater if it is not thawing? Right. Will it thaw? Huh. You will not. You will not have it if it doesn't thaw. Uh, so, or. Uh, at least if you have it, you have it much less, I guess, and will it thaw? Normally I would expect, on the contrary, that the whole structure will will get uh, uh, colder because you you actually put the seabed in contact with the air, so it will cool down the whole, the whole thing. Uh, so uh, so I, I, I would predict that it doesn't thaw. But you said that yeah. it would the settlements were ongoing. In the seabed or Yeah, under the breakwater. Yeah, but the explanation I gave um, to say that I expect that the, the trend is what I expected, but uh, I see your point. Um, that if it doesn't th if it doesn't thaw then you wouldn't expect that, that to settle. Uh, on the other hand, the breakwater itself, the masses in the breakwater, they would settle. Yeah. So okay. maybe not the seabed, but the breakwater. It, it's still, it's, uh, what was it, eight, eight meter high. So, yeah. 
and that will be a consolidation process within the within the breakwater yeah. due to freezing the water. Well, just due to the settlement because of yeah. and I also due to the freezing of water. Yeah, okay. Just in the active layer, so that's not so very big. Yeah. Just in the active layer, you would have a set settlement. But um, but the 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 rate what I measured from my with my thermistor with a thermistor uh, sen or temperature sensors was that the temperature in the um, in the breakwater. Um, so I have it here. It's thermistor. Or is it thermistor four? I think it's thermistor five, and that it's uh, it's basically that inside the breakwater, the temperature at least uh, these year, the years when I when I um, uh, observed it were positive during parts of the year. So then, during that period, you can have the uh, settlement. In the long term, the, the, you you may uh, create permafrost in the structure, but as of today, you don't have permafrost. The whole breakwater is, is part of the active layer. If you look at it that way. Good. Uh, Chapter five. We go into chapter six, and uh, uh, that's also something I want you to comment, and that is uh, related to what we were just talking about. You 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 say in the analysis here that um, it's six point ten thermal uh, regime and frost heat. You say that. Uh, the analysis would gain from a numerical model. Yes, I can understand, but what should we learn from that? What is you want to model? Maybe that was the point you were uh, on to earlier, that, um, that it may have confirmed that the set, this this heave and settlement that we measured were physically possible. Okay. Okay. Because you also write it under ground versus uh, resistivity. And it's easy to say that uh, we should have a numerical model. Uh, at least it gives uh, nice pictures. Uh, but it should be an idea of why, why we should do this. Mm. Uh, most of what, what's said in chapter 6, I think we have uh, been dealing with together with chapter 5 here, so uh, I think we... Yeah, I just have uh, one. You have been a co-author to the articles you have attached, mm -hmm. and that should yeah. be part of the discussion maybe. And in um, uh, Appendix E, Comparison of physical and mechanical properties of coastal ice and level ice. In the conclusion, there, um, you think that the, the floating ice is more viscous than the coastal ice, even if it is found that the floating ice uh, has higher density, salinity, and uh, brine fraction than the coastal ice. Yes. Do you have any explanation? Um, you you have you have uh, probably noticed that um, I don't talk, talk I don't write about viscosity in the thesis itself, and the reason is that when I read through the article again, I started thinking, where does this viscosity come from, or this this uh, consideration about viscosity come from? And I didn't find anything, so I left it out, and I think it's. It's an error, it's a mistake in the in the article. It's a well, it's it's kind of the part of the behavior. Yeah. Um, but but the the problem is that I didn't see that we had any data. I mean, 
not at least not to. If we were going to talk about viscosity, we would have had to argue uh, or to, to explain our uh, the way we reasoned, but we didn't. So, and I am and. Uh, I am not enough uh, an expert in uh, sea ice to um, uh, to feel comfortable going into the, the discussion about the viscosity because I, I don't um, uh, yeah I don't know enough about uh, the relation between the viscosity of the ice and the physical uh, parameters that you mentioned. So uh, you don't feel comfortable. To explain or see whether you agree or not on the conclusion that um, uh, it says that uh, this means that the coastal ice is stronger than level ice when loaded slowly, as why tidal fluctuations, but weaker when loaded faster, as a wind or ship pushes the level ice. Towards the shore. Yeah. Is one or the other more brittle? Is one of my questions. One or the other of the coastal ice or the, or the floating ice. Or the floating ice. That is also something because on the Brit brittleness, I found I didn't find a pattern on the brittleness. Uh, I've yeah, you said something about when the, when the orientation is yeah. 45 yeah. degrees to the basal plane of the That's crystals. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Then you then you have a brittle behavior. But I also had uh, one sample um, from this table. here. We have the table on page two five two. We have a sample P three H one, which was brittle, and sample P five H three, which was brittle. And Sorry, again, can you repeat the page? Yeah, page 252, the page just before, also in this, okay. the same article. Um, oh, if you don't have an explanation, okay, I just... Yeah, might, might be a trick, I think. Uh, I think uh, we, we should uh, just uh, go that, uh, further to, to see the your conclusions. Uh, I, I think uh, you have made good conclusions in your work uh, and I, I want to uh, acknowledge you for the discussion about the ice foot because that is really, as I see it, the core in your uh, work and where you have done very good work and very nice observations and made, made progress. And uh, you have also pointed out uh, future works to be done, etc. And of course there are future works. So you have the second life. <laughs> Comments? Okay. So then I think uh, we are done. Well, then I have to thank the opponents and the candidate for a very fruitful discussion here. A lot of clarifications and the interesting aspects has been uh, put forward. Uh, I'm sure you are happy to have been able to answer all the questions. <laughs> well, uh, now the audience do have a chance to ask a question to the candidate. Does anyone? Uh... Yes. Okay. I just uh, wanted to clarify the last question because the answer is quite simple because uh, sea ice is floating, it is warmer. And food, ice food is colder. It is more porous, but it is stronger. And it is quite visible in Cap Amsterdam that ice bustles are growing from piles, destroying by level. So that's what it is. I think the conclusion was right. About the viscosity? Yeah. Well, yeah, so I agree that the strength of the ice is very dependent on temperature, and that was not discussed. So yeah. I think your explanation might be right. I think this is the conclusion of 
your PhD work for this. The evaluation committee will meet after this and finalize the report to the faculty. Uh, so that this you leave you off the hook here now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, and the opponents and the candidate. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, maybe a comment from the head of our department. I just thank you, wanted to thank you for your um, huge amount of work you have done, and um, also just to express the, the greatness, um, uh, gratitude for the cooperation that NTNU and UNIS are doing, and I think it's very valuable for NTNU. I hope you will continue research and don't give up, even it's frustrating going through because this is doing a PhD uh, in itself is quite lonely to do. But remember when you will continue research, you will never be alone. Because you will have colleagues and friends supporting you all the time. And you so to do a PhD on your own. To do the PhD, you have to do. You have to prove that you are, and um, that you should get the degree. But uh, the continuously path will always to be together with all the researchers. So I just wanted to wish you good luck further, <laughs> and thanks for the opportunity to be here. It's very nice for attending you as well. All right. Should we give the candidate a hand on it? Yeah. And then we all deserve a lunch, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for now. Thank you. 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 Thank you.